I'd like to welcome everyone here to this service tonight. I'd also like to open us in prayer. We need to remember Sister Cooper and uh, Pastor Suresh Rajkumar. He's a pastor in India that my dad supports. He hasn't heard from him since February, and we just wanted to pray for him. And uh, I think that, oh, Brother Armando, that couple that's been coming here, he tested positive for COVID-19. So we need to keep them in our prayers. Yes. Lord, we come to you this evening, Jesus. Pray to you. Bless all these prayer requests, Lord. Jesus, give them strength, Lord. Sister Cooper, Jesus, give her strength in her body, Lord. And Brother Armando and this pastor in India, Jesus, help them, Lord. Whatever they're going through, Jesus, I know you can do what needs to be done, Jesus. Lord, pray that you bless this service and bless this Bible study, Lord, and anoint the pastor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor will come up. Praise God. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Get a chair here. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. I'm glad to be here tonight. Praise God. Are you glad to be here? Yeah. Amen. Amen. God is still on the throne, He's still the Almighty. And in spite of uh, what's going on in our world today, praise God. Amen. He is still in control. Amen. You believe that? I believe it. Praise God. Amen. Well, tonight is Bible study, and uh, I will be glad to uh, get a lot of the folks back. Uh, we miss them. But hopefully the tide will turn and, and uh, we'll be getting a lot of the folks able to come back. Some of them uh, are uh, being careful with the virus issue and that's okay. And some of them are getting over it and uh, all is well. We do, as Brother Israel just got through mentioning, we need to continue to lift up Sister Cooper uh, to the Lord in prayer. Brother Armado, uh, lift him up to the Lord. <clears throat> Praise God. We want God to keep everybody safe uh, through these uh, difficult times. Praise God. As I've already said, he's already uh, got everything in control. He hadn't lost a grip on anything. Uh, sometimes you just got to weather the storm. Yeah. Amen. <coughs> Pray. I said, sometimes you just got to weather the storm. I have a scripture uh, that I have been thinking about here, and I uh, I don't have it in my notes, but I jotted it down just a few moments ago. I'm going to turn to it right quick. It's in Romans chapter 4, <clears throat> verse number 18, uh, speaking of Abraham. Praise God. You know, he went through a very difficult time. He had promises made to him uh, by the Lord. Praise God. And even though God had promised him, everything that God had promised did not develop quickly. Yeah. Amen. One of the things that the Word of God teaches us is that we've got to be patient. Amen. We learn yeah. patience. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, sometimes you will go through times where uh, it looks like just the opposite is happen happening to what you feel that the Lord has shown you. Yes. Amen. And uh, that's, I believe, the way it was with Abraham. I mentioned this uh, a couple of services ago, but Abraham was like 75 years old. Uh, whenever the Lord called him, he called him out of the earth as Charles ends. Yeah. Most people are not even thinking about ever having any children about that time of their life. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's the time that God called him uh, to do something for him. Amen. Yeah. He called him at 75 years of age, <clears throat> and he called him to go into a place. Uh, that he would be a pilgrim and a stranger wandering in tents with his relatives. 
uh, he did call him to come out from his country and kindred, but he did have his immediate family with him and his nephew Lot. But they wandered, and the Bible says in tents, with Isaac and Jacob, even, you know, his descendants, as they later on had children. But God had promised him he was going to make of him a mighty nation. And, uh, and that the, all the nations would be blessed uh, by him and by his seed. And that was referencing Christ Jesus, of course. We know that now. But uh, he called him out and gave him promises. And the Bible says he, he sought for a city whose, uh, maker, who, whose builder and maker was God. Right. Amen. And God had promised him promises that his seed uh, would be as the, sa the sand which is by the seashore and as the stars of heaven uh, if they could be numbered so would his seed be able to be numbered and uh, that's speaking of quite a promise when as he didn't uh, have any children amen and so time went by and it was actually 25 years went by before Abraham and Sarah, his wife, had the promised uh, child uh, that God had promised him. Now, there was a lot of time in between them uh, that he had to do some patiently waiting, didn't he? And, and it didn't look like anything was happening. And one time he tried to figure it out, sounds like, or at least his wife did. Uh, his wife suggested that he take her handmaid and have a child by, by her. And that's what they did. And it actually just caused them trouble. Amen. And uh, Hagar was the handmaid, and she had the child uh, whom they called Ishmael. And that just created trouble for them. And you know what the deal was? Uh, the, the, the child from Hagar was a, was, uh, a child of the flesh, you might say. Uh, it was uh, not the promise that God had promised. They got a little ahead of God. They tried to uh, figure God out, you might say, or how God was going to do it. I think Abraham had faith, but it wasn't what God had planned to give him. And so they got a little bit of ahead, of, ahead of God, it sounds to me like, and they tried to uh, figure out how God was going to do it. But what was required uh, with them was patience. They had to patiently uh, wait for God to bring to pass the thing uh, that, that he had promised them. And th that's the way it is with living for God oftentimes. You know, we are waiting for Jesus to come. Amen. Right? Amen. And, uh, you know, don't grow frustrated or flustered you know we're waiting for this virus to pass yeah. you know don't grow weary and frustrated that God is as big uh, as he has ever been he's as powerful during the time Abraham had to wait God did not lose any strength it wasn't because he was lacking power right. he had a time uh, that he was going to do things and and God is in full control. Uh, he, he's in full control right now, no matter what it looks like. Oh, I want everybody back at the church. And I know some of them uh, are tuning in by way of uh, this uh, Facebook and YouTube. And, yeah. and uh, you know, I'm glad we have that available during this time. And some of them's not coming, not because they don't want to be here, but because they don't want to get other people sick. You know, they don't want to spread it, and so they're they're hanging back and and going through a little quarantine time and stuff like that. Some of them have been around people that had it, and just for the sake of everybody's safety, they're they're tuning in by way of this gadget over here. Yeah. And so, and that, that's okay. We we want people to be safe. There's some that are coming, and some that are here. And we're grateful for that too. We're not stopping uh, people from coming uh, altogether. 
Uh, we have had, I think, one that we asked them to hold off a little bit uh, because they were in immediate contact with somebody that had the virus. And uh, so we didn't want them, even though they didn't have it, as far as we know, they hadn't been tested, but we were just taking precautions and stuff. And we want all of this to pass and we want to get back to normal and, you know, <clears throat> Praise God. Sometimes, you again, you just got to weather the storm. Yeah. Amen. You know what you do whenever it gets difficult? You just keep putting one foot in front of the other, and you just keep believing God. Yes, sir. You know, he has it weakened. Nothing has caused him. He's, nothing has caused him to weaken. Amen. He's, uh, he's not struggling with this virus. Yeah. He's not struggling with the economy. He's not struggling with anything. Amen. He's as powerful as he's ever been. And if you've got trouble in your life, he's as powerful and uh, as he's ever been. And you may wonder, you know, what is going on? Why don't he come uh, and take care of this? I promise you, he knows exactly where he's at and what he's doing in your life. Amen. Amen. And sometimes you just got to hang on and you just got to. Uh, keep believing and know that he is God. He's still in charge. Yes. Amen. And here it was said about Abraham in verse 18 of Romans 4, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. <clears throat> Praise God. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old. He's about a hundred years old. I thought 75 was too old. You know? Wouldn't you have thought? But God wanted it to be impossible for man uh, you know, to, to, to have any part of the credit for this. <clears throat> and so Abraham was a hundred years old. His wife being 90 years old. And against hope, he just he believed in hope. He wasn't weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead. <clears throat> when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And this is this is the best definition of faith, I believe, uh, in the Bible. Again, Abraham, I believe he and Sarah, they tried to figure God out. Yeah. And that's where Hagar came in. It's not that he didn't believe God, I don't believe. I just, you know, a little human ingenuity got involved. He yeah. was trying to figure it out. He was kind of helping God out. Amen. As if he needed any. Now, I know we're laborers together with God, and he uses men uh, to be a partaker in his work and stuff. But in these things like this, God is in control of it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> But this is the best definition of faith, I believe, uh, we have in the scriptures. And being fully persuaded, not just a little bit. He didn't just have just hope. Yeah. Hope's good. Now about his faith, hope, and charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity, he said. Right. Mm -hmm. So hope is a very important part of the things that, strong things, hope that we have. Amen. Yeah. Faith, hope, and charity. Amen. <clears throat> but uh, as good as hope is, Amen. Abraham had something more than just hope. Yeah. He did have hope. He was strong in faith. He was being. He was fully persuaded. That's the definition of faith. Yeah. He was convinced on the interior of his self, on the inside. Yeah. Amen. He couldn't be swayed from it. Okay. He couldn't be swayed from it. He was confident on the inside. He was fully persuaded. That what he had promised, what the Lord had promised him, he was able also to perform. Amen. If God said it, he will bring it to pass. Amen. Yes, you did. Amen. Come on. If God said it, he will bring it to pass. If it's in his word, he will bring it to pass. If he said he's coming again, I don't care how long it's been, he's going to bring it to pass. Yeah. He's going to come again. And it's vitally, vitally important for us to remember that because it's to them that look for him 
shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Are you looking for the coming of Jesus? <clears throat> now, Israel, not this one right here on the front row. I'm so glad Israel's back. His hand is doing better. Thank you for praying for him. Amen. He burned it the other day and wasn't able to be with us because he had it all messed up there. And, but he's doing better. Thank the good Lord. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, <clears throat> Israel uh, in the Old Testament, God's people of the Old Testament, praise God, they came out of Egypt. Amen. And God showed a lot of miraculous signs and wonders uh, for them to see. They, he didn't do it just for a show, but he did display his power and his ability to deliver. And he showed his, his power over the gods of Egypt. Yeah. And uh, displayed his power and, and eventually, after several plagues and stuff, ended up bringing them out from under uh, the control of the king of Egypt and those powers. <clears throat> and then he led them through the way of the wilderness and, and they, they uh, came across, across difficulties. Even after God had brought them out of Egypt, you ever, you ever come across any difficulties? Yeah, hmm? yeah we come across difficulties. Amen. Being a Christian doesn't mean you won't ever face anything or go through anything. Amen. But we need to learn lessons from them in that uh, we don't want to fail the Lord because they ended up failing the Lord. Some of them did. Yeah. Amen. They ended up wandering in the wilderness for 40 years because they failed to believe God. Amen. After all the mighty things that God had done for them. It says in Psalm 78 41, <clears throat> Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They limited Him. I don't want to limit God. Come on, I don't care what it looks like right now. I don't want to let my faith uh, be minimized. Amen? Praise God. I don't want to realize no matter what the situation looks like in my life or what it is that I face, God has not, he's not quit being God. He's still as powerful as he has ever been. Praise God. In fact, if, if you uh, need a miracle, you can't have a miracle until you have an impossibility. Yeah. Amen. That's true. <clears throat> he can't heal a person that, that don't need healing. Amen. He can't save a person that doesn't he save. Amen. He saves people that are lost. Yeah. Amen. And keeps those that are found already. Yeah. Amen. And if you're sick, uh, you know, he's the healer. Praise God. If it says in the Bible that he heals, you know, he heals. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. All he needs is a people that won't limit him. They limited the Holy One of Israel. They grieved God. Unbelief grieves God. <laughs> but people that will believe God, he said all things are possible to him that believeth. Amen. God can do anything. He can come and step into the situation. Praise God. He can come and step into any situation in your life and, and he can change it in a moment's time. Praise God. I may get to what I'm going to preach tonight or not. I don't know. But anyway, I won't, I won't share with you what's on my heart. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Amen. God can do anything. Amen. He's all powerful. I've been in a few predicaments in my life, but I never did see a miracle uh, take place until I needed one. Amen. Praise God. You, I, you know, it was in a tight place whenever I, I needed something from the Lord. Amen. Praise God. That God stepped in and helped me. Amen. Praise God. I mentioned this some months ago, but praise God. Maybe somebody wasn't here or listening. Amen. But there was a time 
uh, whenever I was a lay preacher, I've been pastoring here in Belton for I think 23 years. My wife may correct me, something like that. We started the church here some 23 years ago. Uh, 22 years, 23 years. Amen. But uh, before I ever started pastoring, I was uh, somewhat of a lay preacher. I was uh, actually an assistant pastor for a few years before I started actually being a pastor. But before that time, way before that time, I, pretty much ever since I've been in church, I've been used in some capacity of uh, ministering. Uh, I, I spent some time uh, in my early days. Uh, I got in church back in terms of the Lord back in 1979. So I've been in, uh, heading this direction for quite a while. And two or three years after being in church, I started doing Bible studies and, and different things and being used in different capacities, just, you know, filling in uh, whenever a pastor needed somebody to, well, wanted somebody to preach besides himself, you know, just stepping forward and preaching a little bit and, and uh, filling in and uh, helping out, preaching in nursing homes and different things like that. And I had a pastor who we went to help a home mission church uh, one time and I had a pastor ask me to preach. Uh, I believe it was a Wednesday night. It, was, it would have been a Wednesday night, I think. <clears throat> but uh, we lived in a town about oh, seven, eight miles away from where the church was at. And we was, I had a bunch of kids and just, uh, it was during a very difficult time uh, where I didn't have much money and the job was scarce. I was in construction pretty much as far as, uh, it was in the early 80s whenever they had a recession back in. I don't know if y'all are here old enough to remember any of that, but, uh, it was pretty slim pickings. I even went to drive a tractor minimum wage. And back then, minimum wage was, I think, $3 or something, or maybe even $1.75 or something back in those days. That's pretty slim. But to keep food on the table for my family, I do whatever I had to do, you know, as long as it was godly, yeah. not something dishonest. But anyway, we, you know, we learned to eat uh, a lot of beans and rice and stuff like that. Amen. <laughs> You know, we just keep something going for us, amen. And we had a house full of kiddos, and, and uh, we, we, you know, we didn't live in no fancy house, didn't have no fancy car, nothing like that. And we just did good. We just lived from paycheck to paycheck. Just, we were just poor folks. And uh, we was poor, but we was rich because we had Jesus in our life. Amen. Yeah, amen. amen. And uh, we wanted to uh, help this church out. And, and they were just starting, didn't have any folks, and we wanted to we wanted to do something that counted, you know. Yeah. And uh, just to, you know, we I wasn't no big preacher or anything, not that I am now either. But uh, but just having somebody in the congregation uh, at that time, whenever you start a church like that, it meant a lot for those folks. And we just wanted to go be there and. You know, our family was big enough. You nearly had a church when you had our family. That's right. We just had so many youngins. And uh, so we went and we enjoyed it. But we were, you know, it was, things were very tight. Very, very tight. We just, we existed. And uh, the brother asked me to, the pastor asked me to, to preach. I believe it was a Wednesday night. <clears throat> and uh, I'll tell you, things were pretty slim. We had an old wreck of a car. And uh, I, to be honest with you, I just did not have money to buy gas to go uh, to church. I didn't, I mean, we was on, our car was on the E. Yeah. Empty. That's empty. <laughs> <laughs> and my pocketbook was just as empty, you know. And, uh, but he had asked me what to preach. And, I mean, he had asked me to preach. And, and I did not. I'm one of those people uh, that if I don't, I, I, I have a hard time preaching somebody else's sermons. Yeah. You know, I, for some reason, I just, you know, it's like I got to get, I'm one of those people, I got to get in prayer 
and I got to uh, to it's just like tonight I, I, I got some notes here but I'm just preaching from my heart you know I'm just kind of preaching sharing my heart what I feel in my heart I just before service there but I'm one of those people that's got to uh, you know it's like when God gives it to you you know you, when God lays it to your heart uh, it's just like it can flow you know yeah. but if I'm if I if I got something that somebody else has put together, I struggle with delivering it. Right. Just me, just the way I'm made up, I guess. But anyway, I couldn't get that. I prayed. That guy, that pastor had asked me to preach, and and oh yeah, there's lots of things you can teach and stuff. But I knew that if I didn't get that, you know, that unction from God, that that I felt like I nailed it on the head, you know. If I didn't get that, I, I struggled with teaching and preaching stuff. So I was really seeking the Lord and uh, had been praying and and just you know spending time with God trying to get something to preach. And I just came up empty. I mean, I was prayed through. I was Holy Ghost filled. You know, I had a prayer life. I was faithful. Was, faithful as I knew to be, you know. I, I didn't know of anything between me and God. You know, nothing in my conscience that was God had been dealing with me about that I needed to straighten up or anything. I, I just came up empty. You know? I knew. I mean, I was reading my Bible. I, I could quote a bunch of scriptures and stuff, but, but it's just having that thing, you know, that you know that God gave it to you. That certain thing that he wanted you to to deliver, and I just was struggling coming up with that. And uh, you know, I was. It was time to go to church. Yeah. You know, here several days had passed. I come up blank, and uh, I. Uh, it was time to go to church. I didn't know what I was going to do. And not only did I not have what to preach, uh, you know. You know what God was doing? He was teaching me to walk by faith. Yeah. You know, God will put you in those positions sometimes where you don't know what you're going to do, but just rely on Him. Sometimes you got you get in those places where you're just going to have to rely on God, and He will deliberately put you in those places sometimes to teach you, to teach you, wait on Him, you know, and be faithful to Him. And you can get all anxious and all that kind of stuff in those times. What I'm trying to do is teach you to not get anxious. Yeah. And, but just, you know, just stay focused on him. And so I had zero in gas in my tank, at least on the gauge. <coughs> and I had, I had about nine miles to go to the church because the church was on the other side of the other town. And I had about nine miles to go. I was on E in my gas tank, and and uh, you know, uh, I didn't know what to do but just get in my car and start going. And I was, you know, I was trying to. I was kind of like Abraham. I was trying to figure it out, you know, how God was going to do it. And uh, so I was praying. And I heard people praying before. And they said that they watched their gas gauge go up. I've heard those stories. You, know, you, ever, you ever heard anybody say that? Yeah. They got in the bind, they needed gas, they prayed, and the gas gauge went up. And they God put gas. So I was watching that gas gauge. <laughs> I was praying, Lord, you know, I need to get to nine miles. I'm on E. And uh, I started out from the little town that I was living in and heading in that direction. And uh, I got about halfway there. And I had been watching that gas gauge. I wasn't hardly watching nothing else. You know, I glanced up at the road, but I was watching that gas gauge. Oh, Lord, put some gas in this cone. And I was watching that gauge. I don't want that gauge to go up, you know. Because I've heard others' testimonies. Well, I went over this hill when I was heading down this decline. I about halfway to the destination and my car started ch -ch 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 -ch, started chugging. And I was out in the middle of nowhere then. And here I'm supposed to be the preacher that night. Yeah. You know? And as my car started 
running out of gas. I've been praying, oh God, you know, you're never too late. <laughs> chuck, chuck, chuck. <laughs> chuck, chuck, chuck. You're never too late. You're always right on time. And I was kept my eye on that gas case, expecting, you know. That's what faith is when you're expecting. <laughs> but sometimes he don't do it your way. Yeah. Right. And he didn't do it my way, this way, this time. Yeah. But uh, praise God. As my car was just fixing to stop at the bottom of that decline, man, I was, I hadn't given up hope yet. I was still trying to believe God. But as I saw it in the natural, I was in a predicament. But you know what? God wasn't in a predicament. Right. He's never in a predicament. The only predicament God ever comes across is when we don't believe him. That's that right. puts him in a predicament. Amen. Because he's, he's banking on us having faith in him. That's right. You know, he's counting on us to have faith in his omnipresence he's all powerful he's almighty he's God he's God in every situation things may not be happening the way you want them to happen but he's still God Amen. and as, as that car was I mean it was just fixing to stop completely and I just caught something out of my view on the side of it, and I looked over to my side and my pastor, not the one that I was sitting underneath at that time, my original pastor, Brother Charles Stroud, he had been living down at the coast, around the Thank coast you. area. I can't remember the town that he was living in. I had not seen him in months. I hadn't even heard from him in months. Amen. <laughs> Maybe even years. But it has been a long time since I hadn't even heard from him or anything. As that car was stopping, I, I, I glanced out of the side of him, and, and, and he had came from the coast. <laughs> oh, you talking about timing. <laughs> he came from the coast, and there he was. Drove his car right there, no sooner than my car stopped. And he went and got me some gas. <laughs> <laughs> Did God fail me because my gas gauge didn't come up? No, he didn't fail me. He did exactly what I asked him. Oh, he didn't make the gas gauge go up, but he did, didn't he? Yeah. And he, went, he sent somebody. He did it a different way than I was expecting, but God came through. Amen. And he came through. Yes. He came through. That was not an accident. You know what? They left the coast some hours before. Yeah. God right. had all this worked out hours before. Yeah. That's right. Come on, he was sending them. <clears throat> anyway, I said he was sending them. He had my help on the way. Yes. Amen. He had my help on the way. On the way. From the time, you know, he sent them hours before because he had a he he had a destination they needed to be at. Yes. And you know what? At the same time that I got that gas, I also got my message. Yeah. <laughs> I preached on having faith in God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And oh, was, did it impact me. Amen. I knew I had what I needed to say to those people that night. Amen. Amen. We walk by faith and not by sight. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God, you know, all, he's always conscious. He is conscious. He's always aware. He got, Israel got in trouble because they limited him. Yeah. They limited the Holy One of Israel. We don't want to limit God. There's impossibilities transpire all around us. Our nation looks like a wreck. Yeah. You know what? But God is still God. Yeah. Amen. God is still God. Virus all over the place. Are you scared of the virus? I'm not scared of the virus. I am trying to be wise. You know, I want to be wise. 
Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Yeah. You know, I'm not one of those people go around picking up rattlesnakes. No. <laughs> you can do it if you want to. No, no, no. Amen. Amen. But to me, that falls underneath the category of tempting God. Yes. You know? And, you know, before I came to the Lord, I was terrified. I was serious. I'd have probably fought a bull over. You know? You put a little alcohol in me and I'd fight anything. You know? But, I, you know, I was terrified, though, of, of, of tornadoes. Yeah. I wasn't afraid of man too much, but I was afraid of tornado. I watched one kill some folks. It did something to me. I think a spirit actually got in me back in those days because I was horrified by, after seeing some tornadoes and stuff, it, it just terrified me uh, for some reason. I, it was just going to be a cloudy day, and I'd be, I'd be tormented by wondering if you know, a tornado was going to drop down. I'm nearly embarrassed to say that, you know, but it really was. It was something that just, it just did something inside of me. I think what it was is, though I was so carnal, I didn't know it, but my soul wasn't right. My soul wasn't right with God in those days, you know, and I just, uh, you know, when your soul's not right with God, there's not peace there. Amen. Amen. Praise God. But when I got the Holy Ghost, yes, sir. when God filled me with the Holy Ghost, when I got baptized in Jesus' name, amen, and when I got the truth of the Word of God in my life, I am no longer afraid or tormentous. Yes, sir. I'm not. I'm not. In fact, I find them interesting. <laughs> but I am not going to go grab one by the tail. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to, you know, because I don't believe in tempting God. Amen. Though being a storm chaser does sound very interesting. <laughs> you know, it does. It's kind of intriguing. It's coming toward you. It does. It's, it sounds kind of intriguing. But, but nonetheless, I'm thankful there are storm chasers out there that help yeah. people be aware of the weather and the storms and stuff. I do. Right. I'm thankful for that, you know, that there's people, you know, but... Praise God. Uh, I don't want to tempt the Lord. Amen. So, I, that's like this virus going on. You know, if somebody's got the virus, we don't want to just bring them in. And, you know, I, believe me, I, I've had the flu before. Yeah. And it's a virus. It's a flu virus like, you know, so you want to be wise. Uh -huh. That's right. You know, so that's, that's the way I look at it. Praise God. But I am not afraid. In fact, I don't feel like I'm afraid of dying. Right. You know, because I got peace with God now. I don't, I, believe me, I try to hang around here. Right. You do too. That's right. But I don't live in torment about it. Right. Do you? No. Praise God. If you do, I would encourage you to get close to Jesus. Amen. Pray until you get closest to him. Amen. Because he don't want to let you to live a life of fear. Right. Amen. And when you've got faith in you, don't get me wrong, because some things are frightening. You know? Even Paul had times where things were frightening. He said, within were fears. Uh -huh. He said that. Because, you know, you don't necessarily have to uh, be afraid to die to be afraid of how you're going to die. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are preferred methods. <laughs> you know, like in your sleep. Fall asleep, you don't wake up. Praise God. Amen. But, amen, God does not want us to live in fear. We don't want to live on the outside of God. We don't want to live with sin in our life that we know God has been saying, don't do that. Yes, sir. Get that out of your life. Get that out of your life, whatever it is. If you get that out of your life, that you know that you should not be involving yourself with, that God's Word teaches otherwise, get that out of your life, and then the fear will get out of your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Fear has torment. Lay your head down at night, having peace with God. Amen. 
Because to the Christian, to the person that's given to God, amen, amen, they don't have bad days ahead of them. Amen? amen. Come on. When you leave here, everything will be all right. Amen? amen. Yes. Pray. I said everything will be all right. Amen. Praise God. Leave here. Leave this earth with peace with God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Because this life is just so short. It really is. And God wants us to be a people that trusts Him, that believes Him. So in spite of what's going on, there's, you know, there's a lot of things going on in this life yeah. right now. Amen. I heard one person some months ago say that the world was on fire. Uh -huh. You know? And it looks like that oftentimes. But you know what? It has not changed God from being who He is. That's right. That's right. He's still God. Yeah. He's still God. No matter what you face, if you're struggling, amen, with whatever, amen, don't get caught up in what the world's caught up in. Yes. All this chaos, amen. don't get caught up in it. Come on, live for God. I'm going to read my text. Can I read my text? <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not preaching my notes. But let me read my text. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 10 through 12. And I'll quit here. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil, avoid evil, and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Pursue peace, right? For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and he his ears are open unto their prayers. That's the place you need to stay. Yeah. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Don't do evil. Be a Christian. That's right. At all times, be a Christian. So that God's ear will be open to you. And his face will be turned to you. Amen? That's right. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Have faith in God. Don't limit the Holy One of Israel. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm going to quit. Amen. Maybe I'll talk about this other stuff some other time. Praise God. God is good. Amen. We're going to get Brother Israel to come. And we're going to I'll give him an opportunity to pray over our offering. Give you an opportunity to give to the Lord. Brother Israel, would you lead us in prayer? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus, for this Bible study, Lord, this word that you have given, Pastor. Pray that you help us to take it home with us, Lord, to inquire of you, Lord Jesus, to be able to use this in our lives, Jesus. Pray that you bless this offering as well, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Give us to the Lord. Amen. Now, I'm going to give you a word of blessing. You've been hearing me for quite a bit, and we're, we're going to try to get some other preachers uh, lined up for you, so hopefully Pastor John will be back Sunday morning preaching to Amen. you. Amen. Amen. I know you'll look forward to that. And we got a couple of others lined up uh, of the brethren. Amen. And I believe that, amen, we have uh, some really good preachers here. And we want you to be blessed, fed. Amen. So pray for one another. Keep any that you know uh, struggling with anything in your prayers. In fact, keep yes. all of them. Your church family in prayer. Yeah. Amen. And uh, pray for our missionaries. Don't forget them. I would encourage you. We got them on a screen out there in the hallway. Uh, if you don't have their names, uh, watch those that come up. Those are the ones we support with missions. And keep them in your prayers. And realize that there's people beyond this congregation here. That's true. Doing things for Jesus. Amen. And we want to be a support to them, not only in finances, but also in prayer. Amen, sir. Yeah. So pray for them. God bless you. 
you can consider yourself dismissed in the fear of the Lord.